Not only had I had a teen pregnancy, but I dropped out of college and, and I was in a toxic relationship, an emotionally and physically abusive relationship. And I wanted to share that story because when we find ourselves suffering and struggling, we often make decisions out of that brokenness yeah. that make us even more broken. Yeah. I want to go back to when you were 13 years old and found out you were pregnant. Yeah. Can you ever imagine that day, that night, whenever it was when you realized you were pregnant, obviously everyone listening knows oh, the bishop is your father, yeah. your mother, your, your uh, celebrity status wasn't sought but was there, and now you're 13 years old. Did you ever think from there you would get here and what was it like in those moments? My goodness. I just remembered as you were speaking that, and I don't even think that I've shared this with you, when I found out I was pregnant, it was on Easter. Mm. On Easter, so the day that we're celebrating the resurrecting of our Savior, I felt like a tomb had been rolled over my hope, over mm. my destiny, like the stone had just been rolled over every dream that I could ever have. And it was in that moment that I really felt like that the goodness of God, the grace of God, was reserved for people who did everything the right way. Mm. And it wasn't until I started connecting with other people and really just realizing that we all have a story, we've all gone through something, that I felt like the stone began to roll away a bit. Mm. Mm. But I felt um, useless. I felt dirty. I felt like there was no promise for my life. And I felt like my role would be to see everyone else in life win while I sat there and licked my wounds. And as I began to see that I wasn't in it by myself, I believe that that's a trick that the enemy plays on our minds is that he makes us believe because of our issues and because of our struggles that we have to live life in a prison. Mm -hmm. And so we go about our day and we look like we're free and we're still in our homes and our marriages on our workforces. And it looks like we're free, but on the inside, we're hurting, we're broken, we don't believe anymore. But what helped me and what I hope my story does for other people is just remind you, you're not in this by yourself. Mm -hmm. You are not the only one facing what, you've, what you're currently facing. The, as a matter of fact, the thing that you're currently facing, someone has already overcome. Mm. And because they've overcome, there is hope for your story. Mm. People have had it worse. People have had it better. Stop comparing your story to what's happened in other people's life and start to decide right now in this moment that I am not going to allow this stone to be rolled over my destiny. Jesus wow. died so I don't have to get on the cross. I don't have to spend <laughs> the rest of my life hanging by my own failures and my own mistakes because he lives in me I have been resurrected too and so God what do you want to do with my life what do you want to do with my brokenness what do you want to do with this pain that I felt because I serve a God who makes mm -hmm. all things work together for our good but that working feels like crushing sometimes mm -hmm. it feels like pain and disappointment but it also on the other side <laughs> I mean look at our lives now it's restoration that you couldn't imagine. And there's a time when you will look back and you will thank God. You will thank him for the tears that are currently streaming down your face. Hallelujah. Wow. Hallelujah. If your parents were here, I would ask this question. And uh, I'm going to ask you to represent your parents because, you know, I've, I've been doing this. I've been around TBN for nearly 30 years. I know I have a lot of uh, grandparents. I have a lot of parents. I have parents that have faced this yeah. with their children, uh, maybe will, or even grandparents who uh, have or will face, you know, your daughter is pregnant. What did they go through and how can a parent reconcile when their, parent, when their children make decisions and things happened? Uh, what would they be saying to those that are facing this as parents? We, we're a blended family. We have six children. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you right now that it's no parent's dream that your child gets pregnant as a teenager. So this isn't something that my parents were wishing or praying for. Sure. But I tell you that what they did was they did not allow their disappointment to strip me of their love, of their support, and more mm -hmm. importantly, of God's grace. 
So I would encourage you, if you're at home, maybe you know someone, maybe you've experienced this yourself and you're wondering, you know, I put all of these things in this child, where is it and, and what did I do wrong? I want to comfort you in saying that everything that you put in that child is still there. Mm. And sometimes the seeds, are life ha seeds of life have to be covered in dirt. And sometimes that dirt looks like teen pregnancy. Sometimes it looks like an addiction. Sometimes it looks like dropping out of school. And it's normal to feel like, what am I going to do? But trust that what you begin in that child, Christ is hmm. going to finish. What you begin in that child, Christ is going to finish. You cannot control their destiny and everything that they do. But what you can do is be a river of love in the driest seasons of their life. You can remind them that they're never facing anything alone. And what made me feel so much comfort during my season of of pregnancy and, and all of the other things that I went through is that I got so curious about how my parents could still love me, mm -hmm. that I wanted to know about their God. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know about this source of love that just seemed to run unconditionally. And I had an encounter with their God and it changed my life. This book that we're featuring is actually your second book and it was birthed out of uh, your first book being Lost and Found where actually you just started going on social media and bearing your soul and uh, wow. A lot of people responded. Yeah, so Lost and Found was a memoir about my life, and I shared it because I started a blog online when I just had this revelation that other people had gone through what I was suffering with. Other people knew what it was like to have shame, to have guilt, to not believe that God's best was possible for your own life because of what you've gone through. And the more I began sharing that message on social media that it is available to us regardless of what you've gone through. My blog had over a million hits within the first three months. Mm. And I just decided that I wanted to tell my story. I didn't just want to be this talking head over a computer screen. A screen. I wanted them to know, you know, not only had I had a teen pregnancy, but I dropped out of college and, and I was in a toxic relationship emotionally and physically abusive relationship and I wanted to share that story because when we find ourselves suffering and struggling we often make decisions out of that brokenness yeah. that make us even more broken yeah. and so I wanted to break that curse off of women like me even men who have experienced their own issues and so for me that's what lost and found was all about it was telling my story, but for Don't Settle for Safe, I wanted to give them practical tools. Okay, yeah. you know my story, you know what yeah, I've yeah. gone through, but let's talk about your story and how we can break the patterns that exist within your life so that you can live in the fullness and freedom of who God has called you to be.